Hello, it's Damien. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, I wanted to let you guys know that on May 5th, I was invited by Rex Bear of The Leak Project to be on his radio show, and I was very honored to be on that show. Uh, some of the things you guys may not know about me, uh, about my past, is uh, Rex Bear has been really interested in a Nokian magic lately. And one of the things that I am a practitioner in is a Nokian magic. So uh, he and I had a lot in common when it came to that. And also in my earlier years, I used to be a professional remote viewer. For two years, I was paid for doing remote viewing out of Reno, Nevada through a private company. And, uh, and I really enjoyed that part of my life. And he wanted to kind of dig a little deeper uh, regarding remote viewing and Enochian magic and how those two can work together. And uh, you're welcome to listen to this interview that I had with, uh, with Rex Bear. And I, I do encourage you to support him as well. Uh, he's a fantastic guy, you know, trying to shine light in the darkness, so to speak. And uh, a very, very well-meaning person. And I think he's on the right path. But anyway, uh, Rex Bear, Leak Project, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And I hope that all of you enjoy this interview regarding remote viewing, of all things, and, uh, and Enochian magic. Of course, if any of you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything at all, Please put them in the uh, in the description or in the comments, and I'll get to them for you as well. Thanks so much for your interests, and uh, if you have any questions, shoot it over to me. Bye bye. Enjoy the interview, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining us this edition of Leak Project. I'm your host Rex Bear, and we have Damian Morton with us now. Damian used to actually work with the uh, private company that did some work with the military for remote viewing. So he is a professional. He actually did that for a living. How cool is that? And what I find fascinating is with the Anakian calls that I've really been researching here lately, I also did the 19th call the other day, the call of the 30 ethers. And it was just a really neat vibration. I could almost feel like this vibration in the entire garage. Hey, you could say it's a part of my imagination, yet the imagination is very powerful. And that's what I felt. I don't know what you got out of it if you actually listened to it, but most people seem to have a really good response out of it. And another thing that's neat is Damien actually studied that. So he knows more about it in certain as a lot more about it in certain aspects than I do. And he incorporates it with other modules. So what you're looking at right now is a specific plate of transference of consciousness in essence, just a basic part of that. It's a lot more than that. We'll get into that in detail here in just a few minutes, but I got to say, it's a real honor to have you on the show. I can't wait to, to really dive deep into this because this is just so far out. You know, I mean, this, this information is, when you talk about remote viewing, when you talk about sensing things outside of your physical arena that you're seeing with your physical eyes, yet it's just as real for a good remote viewer with all aspects, all senses from at least the research that I've done and the people that I've talked to like Darren or Courtney Brown, Daz Smith, Dick Algeyer. And I don't even know if they worked with the military or anything like that. They've just kind of got their own private deal where they do the Farsight Institute. And so you were actually working with private companies that were working with the military. That's what you're telling me off the record, right? And thanks for being here. Much appreciated. Uh, my apologies, Rex, not with the military. I worked just for a private company, but it was not with the military. And I did it for two years from 1997 to 1998. Um, so it, yeah, the, what, but what we were doing is we were putting together um, basically timelines. And, and those timelines, we would put variants to them uh, based on trends. And so this was a way to organize uh, future models and that's what we were working on. But it wasn't, it wasn't for the military. And forgive me for um, if I wasn't clear about that point. No, that, that's great. So you were actually with a private company that, but you did it for two years. So what was a day in the office like for you? All right. Well, it started off really interesting. Uh, I responded to an ad. I was going to the University of Nevada, Reno. Uh, that's in uh, Nevada. At the time, I responded to an ad and I met a doctor at a restaurant uh, with another lady who was actually a, um, also worked for the university, but she was in the psychology department. So she, and uh, her and I decided to, you know, join to see what, see what it would be like. And uh, we went over the, the uh, when we did it, the first thing that we were trained to do was to basically learn a new language based on symbolism. 
And that was a real eye opener for me because I'm 18 years old and what do I know? You know, I don't, I, you know, I, this is all, all new to me. So I, I'm, 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 I'm fresh. I, I'm open to this. And, and so it, it kind of works like in the, um, in the remote viewing training session in, in the beginning, it was, it was really about creating images that were kind of like spontaneous movements of the pen. So if you, if I were to say the word mountain to kind of be quick with this conversation, if I were to say the word mountain, you would, you would make a spontaneous movement with your pen that would more than likely generally be like a triangle without a bottom to it. And, and this is a, this is pretty much a universal symbol for the word mountain across different cultures and different languages. So um, I, I like to use that as a good analogy because it's pretty universal. But, but every word that you would pick up as a remote viewer has to have some association to a symbol. And this is a way for you to, to connect, at least the way I understand it, what, you, what someone would call their conscious mind and their subconscious mind. I wouldn't necessarily call it that, um, but, but that's the, for, for sake of understanding, that's, that's what it was. Basically, what, what remote viewing to me is, is, um, is literally inserting yourself into the field matrix and not into a specific portion of that matrix. Uh, the, the field itself is a, the aggregate of all data and information, where if you want to find something specific, let's say the pyramids of Egypt or the Anunnaki in your case, you can, you can dial in that particular phone number and, and pick that up through focus and perspective and through a perspective, a, spe a specific perspective, as opposed to when you remote view, you're literally using experience and you're, you're fanning out and you're let, allowing all data to aggregate. Does that make sense? Instead of localize. I don't know if that's, that's clear or not, but I'm sure it's not. But <laughs> No, I'm, anyway. I'm following you. It's, it's not as focused, per se, your energy, your consciousness. Sure. Okay, so yeah, exactly. So well, it's, it's, it is focused, actually. It's very focused. Okay, so here's, here's how it works. Your consciousness is always full. You're never going to change that, regardless of, of what anybody tells you. Okay. What you will change is your awareness to that. So you dial in your awareness to pick up more information on a specific target, what they would call remote viewing a target, and you would dial in specific portions of that. Now, you, you do have other people who are around you sometimes, what they would call remote viewing monitors, and monitors would task you in certain directions if they felt that you were on to something that they were, they were curious about. Um, and and now, now this is a problem for remote viewers too because it kind of gives them it kind of gives them front loaded information. But then again, when they tell you to go 500 feet above the target, you could still be inside something and not outside, for example. But uh, but it, but it's 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 important that um, that you don't pollute any of the remote viewing data because you are dealing with the field or what maybe some people might call the Akashic record, and you can download anything from the Akashic record, past, present, or future. It does not matter. And, how, and I can tell you how that works if you want. Yeah, absolutely. And let me add to that real quick if I can, just sure. before I forget, please, because I was talking about the Akashic Records earlier today and the possibility of this being like a simulation that we're in, whether it be to raise our consciousness level or maybe we're in some type of boot camp, maybe it's an imprisonment, you know, maybe right now we're being used to fuel some type of dualistic machine based on our emotions and the dualistic universe. Yet, I think that where you're going with, with the... Um, Dang it, I just lost my train of thought here. I was going on five aspects there. I just got harped from Alaska. So, where was I? I don't remember. Please continue. Okay. I'll remember in a minute. So, so past, present, and future. So, um, what, what, what is really interesting about the remote viewing system is that in the, 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 the protocols that I were using did have military uh, application to it because it was kind of it was kind of hybrided from a military you know venue if you will, but uh, and then others too and and Courtney Brown did play a, a crucial role in, in uh, some of the uh, protocols that we used. I know that for sure at the Farsight Institute. But anyway, um, but but past, present, and future. How how the remote viewing works is all personal. It's all internal. It's all inside of you. And, and that's what makes it really uh, unique. And this is what makes it why everybody can do it because there's nothing that was within the world that we live in that you cannot access. Nothing. It's all, it's all accessible if you really want to. And that's what's, that's what's so bizarre about, about how this works. Now, past, present, and future. Your body actually is a clock as well. And your mind 
even though you may not agree, but just hear me out, your mind actually exists mostly in the past, and it's where you bring in your past. I remember when, and I know if I touch that burner, it's going to burn me, and I, I know because I remember. That's what the mind is all about, the past. Now, your heart, which is in the center of your body, which spans out on your right side, which is your, your electric masculine nature, shoots out from your present on your right side, and your feminine magnetic passive nature comes out of your left side and 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 that um that is your present and you you use your hands always in the present this is where action takes place and where your will and your desire manifest is all in the middle of your body and in remote viewing you use that for present for present tense uh, target you know target information in addition, the way this is the way I use my remote viewing. In addition, in your gut, your gut is actually your future. So you, when you feel like, oh, I, I feel like something's wrong. I, don't, I feel like I shouldn't do that, or I feel something. You need to trust those. Absolutely trust that. That's your intuition. That's your feeling. That's your that. That is so important to to uh, to to use that. So so you'll notice that you know not to not to talk disparagingly about society, but you'll notice in society spend a lot of time destroying. That, that intuitive, feminine, gut nature that's always about the mind, not about the feelings. They, they try to destroy that as much as possible. There was a reason for that because that's how you, you stay in tune with the future. Because you are always in touch with your future self, just like you're always in touch with your past self. It's just, you just, sometimes you just train not to listen to your future self. I'll stop well, there. Yeah, that's, that's great. And really where I was going with uh, what we were talking about a minute ago and then I kind of lost train of thought is with the remote viewing, do you ever or have you ever wondered if somebody that gives you that envelope that has those specific, you know, whether it's an X2 or a number or a letter or whatever it is or a symbol that represents specific, you know, coordinates or a specific timeline, have you ever wondered if you're actually picking up on what they think that timeline is like, not what the actual event was or maybe bits and pieces of it, but it's kind of also leaking into what that person thinks might have happened based upon historical data that they have access to? Does that make sense? Absolutely, that does happen. That's, that's a bleed through. And uh, in, my, in, in, in my training, that's called an analytical overlay. And, and, it, and, it, and it's happened to me so many times that you literally pick up what the person's own belief system is regarding something. Now, how the, to, to answer another part of the question that you, you had in there that I could tell was a curiosity to you with the numbers, when you said X2, when, when, you, when, you, when I was training remote viewing, we use grid patterns. And, and these grid patterns are all mathematically equal. And regarding those grid patterns, they use a set of eight numbers, and those and those numbers would be associated generally to a place on the Earth, like almost like a um, like a geographical reference, right? Like a GPS. Mm -hmm. Now, when when what would happen is is that sometimes they would use GPS coordinates that, but they would have off, like what we would call. Um, uh, like off, not off planet, but, but targets that aren't terrestrial. Let's put it that way. And, and, and sometimes you would, and you could also get bleed through, through those kind of things too. So there's a, there was a big, there's a big learning process as well, but there are, there are, there are things that, that they do to, um, to make it more muddy for the remote viewer. Another example, uh, just to, just to kind of make it more clear. When you remote view, let's say a, uh, and this is a, this may be a famous one. You may have heard this. When you remote view a nuclear silo, and your responsibility is to describe where the nuclear silo is and the fact that it is a nuclear silo. But then when the remote viewers go in and they remote view this nuclear silo, somebody put a Mickey Mouse balloon attached to one of the chairs, and so every single remote viewer picked up the Mickey Mouse balloon because they have more of an emotional connection to Mickey Mouse than they do to a nuclear silo. So this is a trick that they can that that has been used. I have fallen for this trick as well because what how I how I organize the remote viewing system that I use that you see through these plates like the one you're showing here. This is partly remote viewing that's done in this. How I organize everything is I organize it through emotion because emotion is how I retrieve the data if I want it back again. 
I can't retrieve the data through my mind. I can only retrieve the data through my emotion. I have to feel it to, 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 to bring it forward again. Kind of a long explanation, but hopefully that's clear. No, that's great. Absolutely. Feelings are so important. And I think that's one of the things that makes us unique is the way that we have feelings versus, yeah, I mean, there, animals have feelings too, yet they don't have feelings and emotions enough to create and destroy like the human being does in essence. I mean, we have the opportunity to create the most amazing things and the most destructive things. It is, it is our responsibility and we can either own it or not. And that's your simulation. That's your matrix. You, you can have an abundance or you cannot. It's your choice. You can create life or you can destroy it. And believe me, like you've been talking about, if you, you, there are people and entities out there that want nothing more than to destroy life. It's true. But it's not, there's, it's not like, you know, but the majority is not like that. The majority is good. And, but you can, you can choose if you want an abundance or not. So what you see in the world today, and, and people may complain, and some people may say it's wonderful, but what you see in the world today is the sum total of the human experience happening every single day. So you can, you can make that sum total better if you want to. Hence why you see the image on the screen in front of you here. This is, this is the hero's journey, the hero's path. You start with an adventure. You start with a challenge. You see something in the world that challenges you. And then what you do is you look for assistance, you look for a teacher, you look for somebody who can give you at least some particulars on how you should go about going on that adventure, right? And that person will assist you and you find meaning in that. And then you go on your departure and then you go through the hero's journey all the way around and then you, you repeat and you do the trials and you get your treasures and, you know, all these things take place for you. This is and a new app. Are, and... Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. So, so now in the center, now how, the, how you read the maps that I have here, what you see in the center is actually you. And that's where you see where it says soul, how, and you. Mm -hmm. and, and what you have there is you're, you are actually like a trinity. You, there are three parts to you. And this, this may be why some people feel like you know, they're, they're lost or they don't know things or because you're multifaceted. You're actually a complex being. And, and the, the, the higher self of you is actually your soul. And your soul is sound, which is your passive nature, and light, which is your active nature. Now, sound is another word, and light is another word for truth as well. So it's your, that's your truth, it, you, your uniqueness, your sound and your light. So you have the SO on the left, which is the passive feminine side, and you have the UL on the right, which is on the masculine active side. Every person is like this. Every person is balanced. Okay, in the middle, you have how, and the how is actually um, how you do something. You may dig a hole differently than I dig a hole, but if we were digging the same hole, we'd still be doing it differently, and that makes us unique and different as well uh, in the present sense. And how is actually the H on the feminine side is health. The W on the masculine side is wealth. So you receive in this world by your actions, health and wealth. That is what you receive as a prize and as a reward for the things that you do in your life. And then your lower nature, which you can also call the yin and the yang, is on the feminine side, you actually have the masculine Y on the feminine side because you have to have the, the counterbalance. And, and this is what gives you that, that dualistic nature of yourself, like you see things in black and white. And then on the, on, the, on the masculine side, you have the you, which is like the cup or the feminine, and that is your center. And also in the, in the yin and the yang, and the center is also to be fruitful and multiply. So to be fruitful would be your feminine, and to multiply would be your masculine. And then the O in the center is what you gather on your consciousness, how it's only two parts. That's your black and your white. And then your upper O is your four parts, which is your senses, which also pertain to uh, earth air, water, and fire, which is what you've gathered to create the body that you have. And this is how you use your, this is how you, per, you participate in the system that you're in. And you do this for joy and purpose. That's what you do this for, to gather joy and purpose. Anyway, I hope I'll stop there. You mean people are supposed to have a purpose and they're supposed to be happy? We're not supposed to be just slobbering idiots and, and watch 
reality TV show on TV and do whatever the, the mainstream media tells us to do? That's hilarious. You can if you want to, if that's what you think your joy and your purpose is. Sure, why not? But, but you know, at some point, you, you, know, you, have, to, you have to pull up your, your big boy britches and you actually have to get out and you got to participate and you got to, got to do something, you know, because you're, you're here. I mean, you, why would you waste this? You get one shot. You get one chance. It's not a video game. You don't get to redo it. And there's so much to do. There's so much to learn. There's so much to participate in. You can do anything you want. So yes, find your joy and find your purpose. It's really not as hard as you think it is. Actually, you pretty much do it every day right now because it's what, if you just look at what you do every day, you do those things because, you know, maybe because you have to because you got to pay bills and stuff, but the things that you do on your off time, that's where you find your joy and your purpose, and that's the things that you should actually create as your model for your way in life, your hero. You are the hero. Well, this is a real neat platform as far as like a map to visualize things and I like the different steps and patterns and just real neat also how you've got the O in the center in between how and then you've got the, the cross right there, northeast, southwest, as above, so below, you're fitting in the yin, the yang, the dualistic universe, the higher self, the lower self, it's really fascinating. And when you were talking earlier about the Anakian calls, and I asked you about what you thought of the, the one that I did because it wasn't in English. I did that in English previously also, but then I, I – was it called Phoenician language? Is that what they – is that the, uh, the correct term for it? It is. In fact, uh, our, our language comes from Phoenician. In fact, if you write numbers, you write the number one, the number one has one angle if you, if you do it the Phoenician way, which is a line, a uh, little line up and then the line straight down, you know. Okay. Number two – a Z and a Z has two angles. A three has three angles. A four has four angles, all the way up to nine. Like if you look at the number seven in German, you'll notice that it it's actually has seven angles to it. So so and that all comes from the Phoenician and and the calls that you were doing were um, uh, were really interesting because they're mostly vowels, and and that's really important because you can actually uh, you can actually resonate your um, you, know, you can call them chakras, I guess. You can resonate. It's actually your spine. And you can resonate different keys on your spine based on the, the calls that you were giving. So it had certain resonance and specific frequencies that it was emitting, which in return would activate certain responses within the mind and consciousness. Correct. So if I go, if I go uh, I'll feel that at my forehead and the top of my head. If I go... I, I'll fill up my throat to my eyes. If I say E, I'll fill up my heart. If I say U, I'll fill it in my gut. If I say Y, I'll fill it in, you know, my root and, and what I would call Pluto, right? Which is the good and the bad of it all. But, uh, but you'll feel it there. And, and if you, when you, when you use these tones in the vowels, especially vowels, you can, you can, you can create your spine will actually, you can use your spine to actually create a harmony like keys of, of, of a piano, a vibration. Uh, and, in the Enochian calls, uh, they would call that the Kybalian or the, uh, yeah, the Kybalian. And the, uh, and that's like, uh, the third, I think it's like the third, um, part of, uh, of like Enochian magic is, is vibration and frequency. And you, you absolutely have to use that for, uh, for your calls. In my opinion, in my opinion, I think you have to use it. And when you listened to it, did it do anything for you, like mentally, or did it? Did you visualize anything? Did it seem on par? Uh, every time I hear a call, I am moved to a point where, I, and and doesn't matter who gives it, I am I am moved. My body reacts, hairs my hairs stand up, and and usually afterwards, I just go whoa, <laughs> like I can feel it. And, and your, your calls do the same thing. Now, I've never heard out loud the call that you gave. Uh, that was the first time I've ever heard it, and it was very powerful for me. And um, so, yeah, I, 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 I have no problem with them. I, the, 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 the calls that I have a problem with are the, uh, are the watcher calls. The watcher calls are the ones that I'm, I'm personally not open to participating in. I haven't heard much about those. Could you tell us? So, you've been you've been talking a lot lately about the uh, like the Anunnaki and the Nephilim and things like that. 
Right. And I did a, uh, actually a podcast a while ago on the book of Enoch and the book of Giants where the watchers are discussed. And there's a, a lot of talk about how the Nephilim that were produced, one translation says they're 4,500 feet tall. One translation says they're 450 feet tall. So they are giants nonetheless. And that's interesting. Are they the watchers one another the same of the call of the watchers that you were just referring to? Okay, so the, uh, well, the watchers and the Anunnaki, in my understanding, are different. Now, sure. and the are, are another whole other situation. Like now, the Agigi? Is that what they're... Okay, now, now the Igigi are even a whole separate situation. Okay, now, I, I, I want to share one thing about remote viewing, and then we can go into this really sure. quick. Sure, yeah, please. And in then I want to I pick your brain more on the remote viewing stuff here in a little bit as well. Okay, in remote viewing, one of the coolest targets, and there's been a lot of cool targets, one of the coolest targets that I, that I just was blown away was regarding giants. And the land that we walk on in certain places, you probably, I mean, you may not believe me, but are actually, could be, you can just consider the possibility that, the, that these mountains in certain instances are actually fallen giants. Mountains. And if you, if you look into it and you look into um, what the consistency, what the makeup is of these certain places, you will find that like right here, I live in Las Vegas. And right here in Las Vegas, we have a place called Red Rock Mountain. Now, if you go to Red Rock Mountain, if you look at the mountains a certain way, it looks like two dead giants that have fallen and they have bled blood into the rocks, which is how the rocks look like Red Rock Mountains. In remote viewing, we picked up on something that I think is very interesting, which is the some places could actually be the remains of giant of actual giants. So I just want to throw that out there as a as a side note. We can talk about that at some point, but uh, well, that's interesting because I'm sure a lot of people when they hear that are going to immediately shut off and oh immediately. Immediately. It just, I mean, it, and even me, I'm going, whoa, that's far out, man. And I'm definitely open-minded, yet I do not want to be so open-minded that my brain falls out on the pavement, yet I know that the brain and the parachute both have to be open to work, and I can appreciate if there's data that backs it up. I just haven't even looked into that, and I've seen video titles that say these, um, these mountains are old trees, and I just immediately shut off when I see those titles too. So, but I've been to areas that have an enormous amount of red rock. Like, as a matter of fact, one of my favorite places in the world, Moab, Utah, incredible mountain biking and four wheeling out there, and it's got just so much red rock, which is perfect for mountain biking and four wheeling. So it's like the epicenter for that specific genre, and the amount of red rock out there is phenomenal. So when you see these mountains that are enormous you're like are you talking like the rocky mountains too you think the rocky mountains are fallen giants no 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 i'm saying that um that what i found interesting is that when you look at the makeup and the consistency through remote viewing they have the same makeup which which leads a remote viewer to at least when i was doing this it led me to believe that some of these plate that some of these mountains could actually be fallen giants now i know that sounds crazy but i'm just reporting this is what i this is what i personally have received that is completely i know out 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 there and that's why i wanted to share it with you because it's totally you know you brought up the giants so i wanted to bring that and when you say how sure. big when you say how big they were yes they it's a possibility it's a possibility they were that big well what mountains if, eat but, and consume so much food that they continually grew and they never stopped growing Yet, yet they put that in as a consideration. Now, let me ask this then. If that was the case, and the first translation, or maybe not the first, I don't think this was the first translation. This was a translation that's from 1817 of the Ethiopian Book of Enoch. And the size of the Nephilim was 4,500 feet from the Watchers. Now, if that's the case... And you look at some of these mountains, well, that, yeah, I mean, but let me ask then, with that said, what mountains did you see that you feel, besides the ones you're talking about, are there other locations as well that you would say there's a possibility of them being giants? Uh, yeah, okay, so um, what's really interesting is, 
okay how i can i can tell you exactly I, I can actually tell you how this came about how this this session these sessions came about they actually came about through looking at water and they were looking at how water flows through um like waterfalls through mountains at high elevations and how that water gets pumped up to these high elevations and and, and pour out and when you look at them they look like um they look like parts of the body that would move lick that would actually move our our fluids in our body they're, they're like made of the same type of materials and and this is this is why the uh the giants of, of fallen giants that turn into mountains came from from, the, from that data because the, the the way the um the way water moves the way the the mountains are are made through the layering and how um like um uh, certain rocks you know look like certain organs like they're, they're made of similar materials the organs when they harden and they solidify how when we look we're looking at the sand that was produced from the, the falling water they look like like animal cells like when you really go into the remote viewing and really look at their makeup they, they look like just petrified animal cells petri just petrified cells of things and, and that's sand you know that that, that 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 was another so i don't want to get too far i don't want to get too crazy with you but i just you know i'm just gonna i just want to throw out like something totally you know like a nuke in the whole the whole thing to, just to, so you can see that there's some stuff out there that's <laughs> exactly <laughs> that's far out yeah yeah and you, you think you i'm insane you can go anywhere you want to go you can see anything you want to see well man i mean i've seen rocks that supposedly came from the moon via nasa and yeah i mean nasa comes up with a lot of cgi too i get it yet i do not think that everything that nasa shows is cgi by any means i think they show a lot of stuff that's legit too and they've had these rocks uh that they've basically sliced in very thin layers that have came back from the moon and they look like fossilized neurons and brain cells and, and stem cells it's fascinating so i can definitely see the possibilities yet it's one of those things it's like at the at the very far edge of conspiracy slash fringe that to grasp, but it's phenomenal. But yeah, let's jump back to the, what we were talking about also after the, 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 or before the giants. Oh, the watchers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's yeah. get into the watchers. Okay. All right. So, uh, so according to my model, the, uh, during the, during the days of Jared, uh, Oh, and let me, let me back up actually just for a sure. second. When, one of the things I, I've been finding really fascinating about uh, what you've been talking about is is time. You've been really you've been really going on on time a lot. Like like this happened this long ago, and this could have happened this long ago. But how do we really know, right? How do we really know? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'd like to I like to propose an idea, and I like to do that off of astrology. And um, and if you if you really if if you, if you want to if you want to look at at a different way, I'd like to explore that with you. Um, in in like um, like this whole Mayan 2012 thing, we learned a lot about the tw in the 2100 year cycle of of the cosmos, right? Like, you know, that like, mm -hmm. you know, we do a, we do a full turn every 26,000 years or whatever it is. We do a full turn. Well, let's let's take that let's take that concept and break it into the zodiac the, the, of 12 zodiac signs. And each one of these zodiac signs has a, a specific influence, a specific feeling, a specific tone, a cadence that it that it works towards during these 2000 year cycles this last 2000 year cycle that we were in was the age of pisces the fish right the, the, the people had on their cars and stuff jesus right this this this, mm -hmm. this this kind of concept and and that was the that was the roman rule okay so that last that's lasted for 2000 years rome technically is is still in power for my model how how we still do our legal system and 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 we and how we still do our economic system it's still the, the Roman way, if you will, but that's all changing because we're in a new age, the age of Aquarius, right? That's the next yeah, 2,000 year cycle that we're moving into. Now, prior to that, yeah, so, so prior to that, the, 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 the 2,000 years prior to that would have been, um, would have been Aries. Now, Aries is, is a really cool, that's, that's Egypt. That was, you know, the reign of, of Egypt in that, that particular time. And that's the, you know, fire. Aries is known for fire and, and being one and, all that, and, and, and those type of ideas. And, and now Aries, now, now Egypt claims that their information came from even older stuff, which would then be Gemini, the 2,000 years, or sorry, be Taurus, right? And that, that era had a lot of sacrifice involved, had a lot of work and toil, had, had, a lot of the, had a lot of those things involved. And that also had 
the flood that uh, that you read about in history happened during that time frame. And then before that, you had Gemini, which was the two brothers that you hear about all the time, always in conflict with each other, right? And and these so these stories have passed down for thousands of years. But from my from my model, it's easy to find find out where you are in time and who was ruling during those times just based on the, uh, how the zodiac works, because as above, so below. Everything that happens on the earth also happens in the heavens. So if you want to know about Inki and Enlil, you need to go to the times of Gemini and that, that, those 2,000 years and how that ended. And if you want to, you know, you know what I'm saying? So that's, that, I just wanted to share that, that with you on, on time from my model. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, so, so the watchers, though, I mean, are they... Pre Anunnaki, you think they're different? So the Watchers were the ones were were the two hundred who fell, um, who took who left their station and came to Earth. And you know you've heard the stories about how they you know they liked the women and you know yeah. all that stuff. So, so those were those, yeah, those were the Watchers. Now the Watchers are um, responsible for advancing our technology a lot giving us that that boost that but that also created a uh, a schism and that schism ended up being corrupted to where everything on the earth was corrupted and in my in my model that corruption was because of genetic manipulation where we were creating all sorts of of, of creatures and things and you know you know minotaurs whatever you want to call them just just giants you know trying to make us better and and we were manipulating everything and to the point where it was all everything was corrupted where there was no good left in anything and that's i think why the flood took place the flood was the reset button if you will the watchers were the ones who came down and taught us these things and did these things and, and enoch who was the son of jared because jared was ruling at that particular time when this took place um Enoch was the son, and so the Watchers respected Enoch. The Watchers listened to Enoch because they wanted to get back into favor with how what they would call the Creator. For my model, sure, okay. So w back to the call of the Watchers. Then I mean, what's I've never even heard of that. So how did you how did you find out about it? So you can use, okay, so the call of the Watchers, the Watchers have a lot of power. They, um, you can, you can, uh, okay, so the light is force. The dark is power. So it doesn't mean one is bad and one is good. It, it just is, when you, when you deal with the, everything is out in the open. <laughs> Everything is, is, is open to where there is, there is no secret. When you deal with power, it's the opposite. It's the opposite nature. Everything needs to be secret. Everything needs to be hidden. Everything needs to be quiet. Everything needs to be still um, in order for you to truly appreciate its essence, to, to, to really go, because you've got to go deep, and there's no light in deep. So it's a, it's a, it's a whole different, it's a whole different experience. It's a whole different movement to, to, to go, to go in, into, um, with, with the ritual of it. Now, what, if you do go into those things, I call it the doorway. And if you do go into those things, there is a, I would go into it with a, with a four part, with a, with a four part understanding. I would go to, into it with sincerity because, um, you don't, you don't want to lie. Uh, especially in a place where anything can happen, you want to have reverence because you want to you want to have reverence because you want to be able to relate it so you don't lose yourself. You want to have humility, and the reason why you want to have humility is because you want to recognize the power of that which you are trying to um, ask for its influence. And you want to have gratitude because whatever it gives you, be happy with it and don't want anything other than that. Because that's how the corruption takes place. That's how that's how they get a hold of you, uh, 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 on on the watcher standpoint. Um, so if you follow, see if you follow the Inaki and if you follow the Inaki inside, you know that the that the watchers are are basically bound. 
So you want to you want to respect that that um, that, that boundary. <laughs> that what do you mean sense. they're bound? Okay, so um, so if you so if you okay, hmm, that's it. When you look at the when you bring up the angles, angles actually create a a box. Okay, angles create a box, so they're bound right. within a box. Okay. Now, in a circle, a circle is infinite. You can, you can extrapolate, you can add, you can grow it, you can make it smaller, you can do it, many different things with it. So it's a, it's a whole different experience. So that's why the calls, in my opinion, I like, and, but the, the rituals can be more difficult, especially if you, there's, if you bring it up to, th there's three, I don't want to get into like all the minutia of it, but there's three levels. You can lock it in with three different um, levels of it into a, a square. Now that creates a, a program. It's like uh, how you would think a neuro linguistic program, right? How sure. like, you hear things over and over again because they're trying to indoctrinate you into a belief system, and that belief system creates a neuro linguistic file, and that file can now be filled. It's that kind of that kind of idea. So they're bound into a square. When you enter into that, you um, you need to know your way out of it because it's not because you could literally go to you could literally go so deep that you 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 become bound. If that makes sense, it's because it like you said, it, oh my goodness, it does. It's reminded me of a vision I had one time when I was like, geez, eleven or twelve, and I fell off the cycle and I went into this, like I, I, I somehow went from being fine. All of a sudden, I was in this cycle that was like, dun 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 dun, dun and that's all I could get was like this. It was just weird, and then and then I fell off of that, and everything, and then I thought I was dead, and everything was like, ding. And then I thought I was there for infinity. And then I fell off of that. And then I went, Meh! and then I snapped out of it and woke up. But that was just one of the most bizarre experiences I had. It was really strange. And what you're talking about is you're also making me think about earlier when I read the eighth Emerald Tablet, which was amazing. It talked about how to protect yourself from the Dark Brotherhood. And it talked about the end of the uh universe essentially where there's these serpent archonic entities that hide in the shadows and are invisible and control people via you can't see them unless you can unless you know this certain sound frequency and and then you can see where they're at and what they're doing and what they're controlling and it talked about how you needed to stay out of the angles and how you needed to stay in the circles i mean then i saw the circles uh, representing certain knocking calls that this one person did on his website that was great. And wow, that's what you just said, the way you described it, that put it all together for me in just such an easy fashion that I really appreciate it. That was great. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. There was a reason we interviewed now versus earlier, I think, today, because of what just happened right there. It's interesting how things sync up and align with each other when you're on specific paths. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And I noticed that you put up the, uh, the psychic one. This is the, the remote viewing thing I was trying to talk about, about the field. Uh-huh. Go on that real quick. So, um, so when you go into the field, you, you're looking for what's unique. You, that this is because you're, you're, you're trying to find that one piece of information that sticks out above the rest. And that's, what, that's, the, that's the information you're looking for that you're trying to gather off the target. And then you, you gather the detail from it. And then it's always within the, you know, the circumstances and the context. And, and this is, so you use, this is the system that you can use to, um, to actually gather your, your impression and your expression. You can find, you can find anything in time, anything in space. Space is, um, is that which is aggregated and time is, is that which is localized. In this particular plate. Okay, so... With the remote view, let me ask a question again about the remote viewing because I'm thinking about some of the experiences that Daz was talking about, how he could not only see what was going on, but he could hear, he could, he could sense what the person was thinking. And then when they remote viewed JFK's assassination, they remote viewed his body, you know, his, his spirit leaving the body, his soul leaving the body, and, and essentially what he was feeling as that happened. Did you see that remote viewing session? I never did it. I never, I never did JFK. Well, did you, did you, I mean, did you see the session that Daz did and Dick on JFK? 
Uh, uh, no, actually, I have never seen that, unfortunately. I, I'm sorry. Okay. Well, the only reason I'm asking is, is there some validity to, well, I know there's validity to it, but how much do you sense when you do remote viewing like other senses besides just seeing it? And how do you see it? I mean, how does, because, yeah, talk about that too. That's, how, how do you see it if you're not seeing it? Good question. Okay, so when you close your eyes, you can visualize something, right? Like you can like literally visualize, like, like if I say close your eyes and visualize a candle, all of a sudden, wow, that's amazing. You can visualize a candle, but it's, it's, uh, you, it's, it depends on what you find interesting about the candle. Some people may visualize the stem of the candle. Some people may visualize the flames. Some people may visualize the wick. Then some of them may be on or maybe lit. So maybe not lit. Some, you know, there's all these different, these different unique properties that you, you look at when you, um, when you go in, when you go into it, but, um, but what you see, it's, it's actually, for me, it works like this. I have trained my, myself to use my senses through elements. So in other words, air, the element of air works through my mind, uh, works through my head and the element of fire works through my heart. The element of water works through my gut and the element of earth works through my body. So when I remote view something, when I'm looking at something, if I want to, if I want to see its body, I have, to, if I want to see what it's made out of, I have to use my body to, to, to gather the information. If I want to see what, how it's moving and what its purpose is, I have to look at its, its fire. If I want to see, you know, um, you know what technology it uses i'll look at its mind if that makes sense so uh, for me i actually um i am a different type of remote viewer because i cannot get detailed and accurate information unless i use the elements themselves through my senses so air the technology itself actually is my eyes and um the uh water in my gut is my mouth so i'll taste if that makes sense and fire will be through my nose, so I'll smell it. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll try and smell it with my senses. And, and then I'll, I'll pick up subtleties regarding it. Now, what you want to do with remote viewing is when you pick up the subtleties, you don't want to get like crazy with it. Like, oh, I smell you know, a New York steak at the Claim Jumper. No, you want to say, I, you know, I, smell, uh, I smell burning. You know, I, I, I smell something burning. You know, keep it as basic and as reptilian as you can. Keep it as at the lower level words as possible to describe what it is that you're seeing. And then, uh, it, so it, it kind of, how it works is it's kind of like you're really far away and you don't really see anything at first. And, and then all of a sudden, it's like you're driving in a car and you're driving down the road and all of a sudden you see something that's in the road and you're like trying to, what, what the heck is that? And you're trying to describe it. And it's okay, so it's black. Okay, it's about the size of a shoebox. All right, you're like you're kind of describing it, and you're getting closer and closer to it as you're getting more details. Okay, it looks like it's, you know, it's bumpy. It's you know, it's wet. You know, you can have these descriptions, and you, and you but you don't want to. And like all of a sudden, you go, oh, it's a crow, and you're like, uh oh, block that out of my mind because it's definitely. I don't want to say it's a crow because I don't know for sure. I'm too far away. And as you get, and you block that out of your mind, and you get closer to it, and it says, okay, it's moving. Okay, the, oh, it's windy. Oh, it's a tire in the road. You know what I mean? Like I, you, you get closer and closer to the, to it through remote viewing because remote viewing is designed to, um, it's a, it's an organizational tool that you put everything in very, very specific places. And the reason why you put things in specific places is because you've got to keep your mind occupied on the minutia and the detail. So your emotion can actually with, take the information and, 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 and gather it and bring it forward for you. So, so like an example, remote viewers who remote view something, you know, like, um, you know, something that everybody knows about like Disneyland, uh, most people will get Disneyland because they have an emotional connection to it. But if I say, I want you to remote view um, a caveman, uh, you know, not everybody's going to get that because there's not really a whole lot of emotional uh, zeal to that. A whole, uh, they can't really connect to it. There's a, there's a threshold of detection. The better remote viewers, like maybe Dick Argyle and the guys you were talking about, those guys have a threshold of detection so low, they can probably pick up, you know, uh, you know some, somebody having a, a trampoline in their backyard, you know, as, as far as I know. But uh, anyway, I'll stop there on, on, on how that process works, on, on what you see. You don't really see, you're, 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 more, you're more sensing. You can see, 
you, you, you technically can if you really are connected to your mind, like, you, like in, in the, in the target is really mind driven. You can see, you can see things for sure. And, and they, they can, and you can actually become what they call bilocated. And that's another uh, whole nother avenue that you, that things happen where you literally like the, the target takes you and all you see around you is the target. And you kind of freak out a little bit because you know that your body is sitting in a chair with a pen and paper and, and, and a room somewhere, but you you're looking around and you're like, where am I? <laughs> that, that has happened before. What was the craziest experience you ever had with a remote viewing session? Well, I kind of threw that at you already early, which is like, I, like you said, we're probably gonna lose a lot of people on that one, but that okay. was that <laughs> blew my, that one bl giants blow my mind. That's why I brought it up. Cause it was just so crazy. Even to me, that one's crazy. <laughs> but well, we've seen crazy, stuff. But we've looked at aliens. We've looked at all, all sorts of stuff. We've, we've done, we've done all those kind of things. For so, the private company that you work for had you looking at aliens and giants. Well, we looked at aliens because we were commissioned by somebody to look at them. And, and that was another very interesting target because... And do you think it was the military? I do. See, you work for the military and you didn't even know it. Hello. No, no, I, I do. I, I, don't, I don't know if... It, I, what I think is I think that... Bing bong. Go ahead. Oh, I was just joking. <laughs> no, no, no. Please, no. Far away. I just said bing bong. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's a there's a there's a big interest in that kind of stuff for some reason. Um, I I must not be a very good one when it comes to those kind of things because I don't really get, you know, crazy, you know, aliens from Octurus and and stuff like that. You know, I don't I don't get anything like that. I I do I do get uh, I do get grays, um, but they're but it's I don't the way I get them. It's it's nothing more than it's not like a it's not like an evolved creature, if you will. It's not like something that, that I don't know, I don't know quite how to explain that one. Reptilians, yes, uh, those things are interesting, but only in like, um, only in like they live scenarios, which is interesting. Like they're among us or something, <laughs> you know, like one of those kind of crazy ideas. Well, do you, you said you've seen kind of grays or you've remote viewed grays before, but were they like robotic? They're like, yeah, they're like robotic. They're like, um, they're, they're almost like a machine. That's, that's, but, but they, but they are a, but they are also a vessel, which I also find interesting. Like they can house things that I don't understand. How many times did you remote view extraterrestrials? Not very many um, from, from the, the, one, the ones that we were doing, an extraterrestrial is not necessarily um, an entity that comes from the stars. An extraterrestrial is some, as an entity that be, comes from outside of our terrestrial zone. So, and we get lots of that kind of stuff. Lots of that kind of stuff. Can you share outside. some more examples? Okay. So, um, Yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah, I can. I'm going to give you an example. Let's talk about. I don't know if you. Uh, I don't know if you know anything about Antarctica. Do you know anything about Antarctica? You heard about Antarctica? This. I heard it's really cold, and yeah. there's an ice shelf that's about ready to break off. Okay, good. Okay, perfect. Okay, all right. So, in Columbus's time, they discovered America, and 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 people were pretty pissed about this, by the way, because there's more land. There's more resources, uh, and this this changed society when when America was basically declared to the world, and they opened it up for exploration. This changed the world. Well, in the remote viewing, another aspect was how to properly structure and manufacture and control a a, a society. How to do it basically to change the program. And that was Antarctica, to open up Antarctica to resources, to open up Antarctica, but, but to do it in such a way that it is controlled and managed to like the nth degree, micromanaged as far as, as, far as you can do it. And, and, and this 
is a trend, is a timeline, is a program that I see that we were, we were working on in, in, you know, in 98, and I see that now it looks like they're, they're implementing Antarctica as a new extraterrestrial zone for us. So we're going to find all sorts of interesting stuff down there. And, and, and remote viewing, uh, we look at what's there. We can look at what's there. We can look at what we may run into. What have you found? Oh, there's all sorts of interesting things down there. There's all, um, there's, there is technology down there that, that is very, uh, uh, we talk about sound, we talk about vibration. There, there is technology down there that, that utilizes this type of, of technology, the sound vibration technology, where, where it can literally melt stone. Like you can, you can use sound to melt a solid stone and shape it into what you want. And did you see this in one of your sessions? This was, one of, this, was a, this was a technology that I am so hopeful that will come out because yes, this is, this is a technology of, 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 of great importance if this is real. How did you sense it? Well, luckily it's made out of materials that we understand like, um, like heavy metals, for example. Um, these and, and, and actual stone and stuff like that. And if it wasn't, if it wasn't made out of materials that we could understand, like, like, thank God it wasn't made out of plastic. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like a, a different kind of plastic or something that we didn't know because, but it was made out of materials that we understand. So it was easy to pick apart what it is. And then you can see that it is actually, uh, it's a tool. It's a mach it's a, it has a use. It has a purpose. It has a function. And, and so what you do is you try to pair that function and use with its surroundings and you try to locate its counterparts so you can, you can actually see what it is. And then what you do is you discover that this is actually a technology. This, is actually a, 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 this was actually used for something. So we'll find things like that down there, hopefully. Yeah, it depends on who gets gets a hold of it. It reminds me of the uh, the Hutchis, the Hutchinson effect, where this gentleman by the name of John Hutchinson created this technology out of his garage, essentially. I think. I mean, he's just like one of those geniuses that creates things out of his laboratory in his man cave, and it will literally twist blocks of steel. And it's like a sound. It's, it's very fascinating. I've invited him on the show before, and it was about a year and a half ago when I did. So I need to get him on the show sometime. I'm wondering if that's the same type of frequency or something like that. But I mean, how, did you, how many people did that session? Was that a private session as when you were working for the private company as well and there were some contractors that came in? Or how did that go down? Well, I've only met a couple of the people who I was supposedly working with. Um, and how it would work is I would basically I would go to the doctor's house. The doctor would give me the session. I do the session. And then, but at times he would have all everybody's sessions together and I would see other people's stuff. You know, like I can actually see some of the things that they're working on because I didn't, I didn't really get the opportunity to see how accurate I was on a lot of the stuff. And I really wanted to know. And I know that one of the reasons why our, like, I, I know one of the reasons why it was, it was hard for us to make money is because it doesn't have a very, it, the accuracy rate is not as good as people think it is. Like people, some, like some remote viewers say they have as accuracy as 80%. I, that is to me is amazing. Amazing. Like if you get 50%, I, I, I think that you're a great remote viewer personally, if you hit 50%. But, um, but because of things like that, you, um, you get, you get paid to do something and, and they send resources out to collect this, whatever that is that you're seeing right? Let's say you're looking for gold somewhere and they send resources out to go there and they find out that that wasn't there and they paid somebody, a remote viewer to do this. And then that ends up turning out to be no, you know, that's not good. So, but then you only have those you know, few times that it turns out to be yes. So in time, it's automatically just going to look like it's a, you know, people going to think it's a scam, but, but it really isn't. It's just, you know, it depends on a lot of things. Like anybody, anybody can literally do this, but the accuracy is not a hundred percent. 
You know, like for example, the military, a plane goes down in Africa, let's say, and they need to send, you know, a SEAL team in there to go collect whatever's on this plane. And the remote viewer says it's in this grid. They send these guys in and it's a hostile territory for whatever reason. They send these guys in and the plane's not there. That's a problem. You so know, did they pay you like a salary or did you get a commission or? Yeah. Okay. So I got a commission off things that I did. And I also um, made money on um, when we did out and we went out and we did uh, presentations for people and, and they would go, okay, ha ha ha. Let's see if this works. And they throw something in a bag. Right. And then they say, okay, Damien remote view what's in this bag. And so I'd go and remote view and I go, okay, it's your car keys. And then they, and they go, Holy oh, how did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> or, 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 or I say, it's your cell phone. I go, nope, it's my car keys. You lost. Sorry. You know, that, that stuff happens. But uh, anyway, that's how that worked. Now, do you use those abilities to kind of tap into things? Do you ever think to yourself, I want to see something on this, at this location and you see it, you ever try and, um, I don't know, just do stuff like that in your mind, like you did before without the coordinates all the time. How does it work? Well, one of the things I found is that, um, you kind of have to have your finger on the pulse of everything though. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of energy and and you you really have to you really have to balance everything in, in a in a uh, in a very like very touchy feely way. Um, so for example, there is so much minutia on like YouTube and on the internet that you can just get bogged down and lost in. And and you know uh, one of the things that you posted recently was about the war and stuff like that. And 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 you know war doesn't happen in one day it's a, it's it's a process it, it's a program it takes time there's there you can see all the trends and how everything plays out and how everything is it's theater you know there, it, there there's work there's scenarios and, and thing, things have to be moved and 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 um and all all this stuff so you you can get lost in a lot of that minutiae when you really all you really got to pay attention to is what is the agenda what are the initiatives what is the legal reason why they're claiming that they can do this. And you will find that most things uh, regarding, like say politics or economics, have, a real, have actually a legal framework behind them. And, and once you have that, once you understand how the, that legal system works, it's very easy to see their moves. It's very easy to see how they're gonna structure society and how they wanna get people to go certain directions. And you can also tell by the language they use on the news, because the news is totally controlled. Hundred percent, and they use that language on purpose. They you could, they use certain words on purpose. The one I like they've used recently is the word ironclad. We have an ironclad agreement with China. That's a very fascinating word to use. Ironclad. <laughs> I think about that. Iron. You have an ironclad guarantee over your money. So I, I, you know, and, and this is, this is, this is how you, this is how you stay in my opinion, how you stay accurate and how, and Oh, also another thing that you brought up that I also agree with you is you always have to tweak and change your model because things constantly are changing. So you always got to update. You always got to allow new information to come in and, 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 and rework your own understanding. Have you ever had an OBE? No. Okay. And have you ever been able to like lucid dream where you can control your dreams inside your dreams? Yes, I've been able to do that. Okay. So what would you say to the skeptic out there that says they want proof that you or somebody else that's done remote viewing can actually see or sense things without actually seeing it with their physical eyes. I mean, were there, were there a lot of tests that this private company did for you to get you a part of it? Or do they just say, okay, we'll give you an open shot. It doesn't really matter. So anybody who's a skeptic out there that I, I can appreciate that because, uh, you know, doubt keeps us all corrected and sane and in our own heads. So always have that. But, but if, if you really, if you really want to uh, remove you, 
tune yourself to the world around you and amplify your awareness to things. So when you go to the store tomorrow, look around and see if you see something you've never seen before. Look around and see the color of the grass. Look around and see how many times the light is red for you and how many times the light is green for you on your way. All these things will add to your awareness and that is in essence like remote viewing where you're, you will organize, remote, see remote viewing is for the skeptic, it's just, it's just an organizational trick. Like you see here in front of you, I've organized everything with in the upper right is the masculine air, which is my mind, which is, you know, that's how that's organized. So I, I, all my remote viewing is organized in, in that, that system for me. So and I create anything I want to know. This is basically what you're seeing here is a summary of just looking at what, what it, what's psychic in remote viewing. What is psychic? So I, I use these elements to extrapolate the essence of what it's trying to communicate. So it's a, it's a meditation. So when you look at these, it's actually not teaching you anything at all. It, it, you are actually teaching yourself based on the words that it's using. So you have, you have a different understanding on the words than I do. So it doesn't teach you. It just reveals to your own understanding of, of, of things, if, if you follow. Absolutely. So that's, Absolutely. that's why remote viewing is real. Because all it's doing for you is it's organizing your thoughts it's organizing your experiences. It's giving you a perspective based on focus. It's giving you an, em an emotion based on, on, on true, you know, ex true experience and, and, and true care. Like if you, if you, if the reason why you want to look around is because you want to actually give a shit about what's happening. The reason why you want to see how many times the light's red or light's green for you because you want to give a shit about how the universe is perceiving you. Because the light is green everywhere you go, the universe is pretty favorable to you. And I would use that to your advantage to better the world around you. But if you get a lot of red lights, I'm just using a terrible example, but if you get hit a lot of red lights, you better be checking yourself. You better be finding out you know, how, to, how to reorganize to, to make your life better, maybe the people around you. Because you know what? There's a, there's a lot out there that, uh, that could use your help. Or you help. could do what my grandpa used to do. And when the speed limit was 35, this guy was so frugal, bless his heart, <laughs> that he would drive like 20, I think he had, he had it literally down to when each light would turn green. So he would drive the exact speed to where he didn't even have to stop. I mean, the guy was just was brilliant, man. He, he ran a credit union out of his house. So yeah, I like what you're saying. Though. I'm just I'm just kind of playing around, but he literally did that, and he would embarrass my mom and my aunts because he drove so slow and his speed limit. But he didn't know how to avoid the stoplight being red. So you can either do that and drive really slow, or yeah, check yourself. I like that. That's a really cool analogy. And also to add to that, when you're driving to work and you see an eagle like literally hover over your car or wait until your car goes past and fly over it. You know, look at that symbology too. I think that's a really neat point. And I like the way you bring up the, the cataloging of emotions slash senses, essentially, the cataloging of senses to create uh, stimuli that helps you understand what you are sensing and what you were visualizing in that state of remote viewing. That's great. That's a great way to describe it. And like, how do people get a hold of you? Damien, is there a way that, like, do you have a Facebook page? Do you have a, a YouTube channel, a website? So okay, I uh, I do have a I do have a, uh, a website. Uh, it's called questneybook.com. I wrote a book on all the stuff you see here. I have a a book that you can get for free if you want it, um, and it's uh, it's questneybook.com. Uh, um, also, I have um, a YouTube channel, but I don't really post anything on there. If you just want to get a hold of me, you know, hit me up on the uh, the Questney book if you want. I also own a few businesses in Las Vegas. Um, you know, uh, shoot me. Uh, I, I don't know. I, mean, I guess that's the best way. You can. I don't know how you normally would, would do this. I've never actually done an interview before. So. Oh no, that's fine. I'm looking for you on the. Uh, I'm trying to pull up your website. You said Quest Me book. Oh, uh, Questney book. Q U E S T I N Y. B-O-O-K dot com. 
And oh, you know what? You know where I do post though? I do post on minds.com slash questiony as well. I, I post a lot of my plates on there for people who just want to look at the plates and don't want to, you know, go to the website and just want to see different plates. They can go there and, and find me. Yeah, there you go. That's uh, that's my website. I just threw that up for, for fun. It's it's all free. But uh, anyway. Oh, that's cool. That is so cool. I really appreciate you spending time out of your busy schedule. And uh, you know, hopefully we can do this again sometime. It was really nice to talk to you. Thanks for coming on and sharing your knowledge. Thanks, Rex, for having me. I uh, appreciate it. And uh, yeah, anytime, man, you want to you you chat and talk about stuff, you know, I'm totally open to it. The, the crazier, the better, as far as I'm concerned. It expands my mind more. <laughs> right on, right on. And is there anything that you would like to share with the audience before we close that maybe I should have asked but didn't? Uh, no, man. I, I think you, uh, you pretty much covered it. I just, uh, as I keep you on the show, 20 extra minutes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I, I think we pretty much covered it. I, you know, I can send you all sorts of stuff and we can talk about all sorts of things. So yeah, anytime you want to, you want to chat, man, I'm, I'm open to it. I, I really appreciate you having me on and, uh, I look forward to hearing more stuff coming from you, man. Keep it up. Right on. Thank you so much, Damien. It was a pleasure to speak with you. Ladies and gentlemen, check out quest in why book. Dot com. Also, leakproject.com. We have premium podcasts on there for exclusive members. Also, I think about 800 now. We just broke the 800 podcast mark on youtube.com slash clandestine time lord. Thank you for everybody that's been here with us. Question everything and be the change you want to see.